Sad Mary is teaching you how to paint today. Keep it smooth and steady. Um. Ah. How to art. Hello, my name is Mary Doodles, and I'm going to show you how to art with watercolor. All right. Shout out my art supplies. Bristol board paper here. Fun. It's not watercolor paper. There is a watercolor paper available to the world, uh, but this was the closest thing to me. And I'm having a difficult day. Uh. The show must go on. I have my palette of paints. Uh, There's a variety of brands in here. If you're looking for a good go-to starting watercolor brand, I recommend Cotman or Windsor Newton. Now I also tend to have two glasses of water. One is for the rinsing and the cleaning, and the other is for clean water. Let us begin. I'm going to start with just water and a brush. I've dried my eyes and wetted my paper. Time to put water and paint down. So the beauty of watercolor is that it dries up, but then it awakens again when you add water to it, which is what I'm doing. And I'm, use, I'm being very careful to use my dirty brush during this mixing part, because we're getting some pigment in the jar. And just keeping this one immaculately pure. My dark side and my light side. Can't have the dark without the light, because if you only have the light, you're blasting out the shadows and you're just nothing. You're a, a void. Sometimes you have to mix the two, and sometimes people don't understand that. Okie dokie, let's just move on with our lives. Bloom. Look at that. That is a bunch of purple. And you can see the paint is kind of feathering out where the paper is wet. This is the fun part about watercolor. The paint will go wherever the water is. Control the water, you control the paint. Control the water, you also control everything. I have no idea what I'm painting. I think this piece perfectly represents myself right now. There's a lot of potential, um, but it looks a little weepy and it looks a little sad. and. That's okay. Sad Mary is teaching you how to paint today. All right, look at that. I'm just gonna get my clean water. You were so pure. I'm crying about the water, I promise. <laughs> That's fun, look at this beautiful gradient. This is pretty, this is perfect. Let's see, we don't need to be controlling. You don't need to be controlling of every aspect of the painting process. We can sometimes just let the process be the process. What's wrong with the process being the process? And at this point, you may be thinking, oh God, I need to get it together. It's in this drying phase. You can't control whatever's gonna happen on the page because it's just saturated with water. What do we, what did we learn? Where the water goes, the paint goes. With that in mind, we're gonna be a little chaotic today, if that's okay with you. Things are very wet at the top part of this page, but I'm noticing there's some dryness happening down here. I'm gonna see what I can do with that right now. So I'm gonna dip my brush in my pristine clear water, and I'm going to go and get some of this indigo paint loaded up. Let's just do a little swoosh across the page and upward. Kind of steady gradient. It's kind of like a peak and then a valley and another peak and another valley, but then we like go up again because that's what life is. So everyone wants it to be like a straight steady thing up, but like sometimes you hit a depression and a recession and sometimes people find that unforgivable. So you go way down, but you got to say, you know what? F that. I'm listening to Lizzo. <sighs> that got weird. Smoothing it out. It's a process takes time. Be patient with yourself. Landscape. That was just for me. I like none of it, so I'm gonna start painting over it. Noping it all away. There is a moment of that painting where it was beautiful and it could have been something really beautiful. <laughs> and that's how that landscape never existed. If you want to get like a smoother gradient, sometimes it helps to switch out brushes and just clean it up. I liked how it was a little lighter in the middle. 
run it across the page while dabbing off the excess paint to help lift some of it and bring out the white of the paper underneath. I might grab some of this indigo paint, this high-end indigo paint. Let's see what we do. I'm kind of keeping it loose and doodly right now. And it's staying pretty consistently wet. Like if I was drying up a little bit on the bottom, so I'm just adding a little more water to the brush. See what that does. I'm really impressed with this paper. It's kind of warping, but not horribly. Go paper. Mm, I have an idea. I have an idea that's risky. I'm gonna go for orange. Because I can. And red. I'm gonna wake up these colors here with my pristine clean water and bloop, bloop. Oh, look at that. This is fun. Who cares? Everything is burning down anyway. Oh yeah. I'm just putting this pigment down, seeing how it interfaces with the purple. I don't want them to get too blended and muddied. I'm adding like a little bit of water to these patches of pigment. Look at how that starbursts out. That's really fun. Oh, this is cheering me up. I don't need love. There's this inconsistency of wetness on the page. This whole area where it's orange and red is like a pool of water, whereas everything around it is still damp, but it's kind of dried out, so it's resisting this new wave of paint. But at the same time, we're getting this cool feather effect. The only reason why I'm gonna add yellow is because this part here is very light. There's a lot of the original paper showing through and it's very dry. So I have a chance of tossing in this yellow. Splattering it up, why not? I'm wearing white. What could go wrong? Everything could go wrong. And that's not as scary as you think. I'm gonna take advantage of this top part while it's drying out a little bit, just a little bit. Accenting it with some more red up the top. Let's get really fun and put some purple back into the mix. But not too much. This is a strong color. Look what happened to Prince. Purple rain, purple rain. I usually paint with music. But it's just us, so. Paint my pain, paint my pain. I don't like what's happening down here. I'll fix that. I got too involved in my own pain and now purple is bleeding into a space I don't want it to. I kind of want to compartmentalize and get on with my life and shoot a video. Cool, I think I fixed that. I think I solved the problem. There's no problem. There's never a problem to begin with. There's no such things as problems in art. Great, well, my camera just ran out of battery up above, so I'm going to take a little break and let this dry and make some coffee and try not to cry. Time has passed. The lighting has changed. A dog has appeared. And I'm going to add another layer to this piece. I feel good. I got my tea. I've got my dog. I've got a beautiful painting before me that is ready to be defined. And I shot a sketchbook tour for Patreon, which felt really great. Go join if you want to see sketchbook tours and things that you don't see here. Oh, that feels good. This is fun. If you're new to painting, um, just do trees, because it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's okay. Nature can be chaotic. Usually if you just go with like lines and then slightly smaller lines, and those slightly smaller lines maybe form a pattern of sorts. I want a little more structure and predictability in my trees. I want to lean into the patterns and know that you know, if I do one tree with asymmetrical branches, then I'm gonna do all my trees with asymmetrical branches. Loosey goosey, a little sloppy, so I'm gonna just tighten these up a bit. Four beautiful trees, such happy little trees. This one goes out to you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. 
I think the relaxing thing about painting nature is that there's both patterns and some predictability, but a lot of room for improvisation and chaos, which is really all life is. Improvisation and chaos. I've always been painting trees. I feel like this kind of painting is something that I tend to go to when I want to paint or need to paint, but I need like that comfort blanket of a painting. Look at those happy little trees. Now they're kind of, it kind of feels like they're in a void. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some texture and foliage to the base and give them sort of a, more of a ground to stand on. Being loose with it. It's a bush. Oh no, it's another bush. I'm even looking at it. Just letting nature do the painting for me. Oh, there's a trail. Uh-oh. Footprints. Oh no. Uh-oh. Improvisation and chaos is taking over. Is, ooh, black. I'm gonna use black. Who made these footprints? It's just one of those yip 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 muppets. Yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh. Not painting one of those. <laughs> In the words of Tessa Violet, cute. And we're gonna try and make the other side as symmetrical as possible. Cool. I had no idea what this was gonna be, and I still don't know. It's incredible what contrast will do to a painting. Just a little extra dark next to some light and mid-tones. It can create depth, it can create shadows. I wanna be here, I wanna live here. I'm gonna move there, I live here now. Don't mind the shadow, it's just always there. chose this. We did it! It's done. I'm calling it. It is completely finished. Completely done. Completely done. All done with this done done painting that was done a mile ago. Let's put a signature on. No, I don't like that signature. Oh no, it's another bush! How many times can I sign a painting? Nope, not going with it. I think 90% of my paintings are failed signatures. This entire piece was me trying to do a signature. Why is this the hardest part? And it's done. And that's how you make a watercolor painting, Chaz. It's just that easy. Wow, art, it happened. Thank you for watching, dear doodlebugs. If you want to see more of these videos or any other kinds of paintings. If you have requests, I love hearing your feedback. Um, leave a comment below. And I'm going to be posting this in my shop at marydoodles.com. This is gonna go up in the shop with a bunch of other paintings. I'm cleaning out my studio. And so I think I'm gonna be either posting old art to my shop or doing giveaways with it or burning it. So next week I have a special painting video coming up for you. It's a piece that I'm really excited about. It's more watercolors. I also got a bunch of tutorials if you wanna learn more about art, painting, watercolor, drawing basics, inking, and above all, thank you very much for watching, dear doodlebugs. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay, goodbye.